How do we breathe? It is something we do all the time and most of the time without thinking about it. Ventilation is the movement of air in and out of the lungs. Respiration is the exchange of gases. There are two types of respiration. Pulmonary respiration which takes place when oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuses between the thin membrane of the alveoli and the capillary beds and cellular respiration which takes place when oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuses between the cell membrane and the capillary beds. Everyday functions of the body like digesting your food, moving your muscles or even just thinking, require oxygen. Metabolism is the work of the cells. In the presence of oxygen, aerobic metabolism produces a gas called carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of aerobic metabolism. The job of your lungs is to provide your body with oxygen and to get rid of the waste gas, carbon dioxide. Your brain constantly gets signals from your body which detect the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your blood. Your brain will send signals to the muscles involved in breathing and adjust your breathing rate depending on how active you are. At rest, the normal respiratory rate of an adult ranges from 12 to 20 breaths a minute. When you're active, your breathing can increase up to about 40 to 60 times a minute to cope with the extra demand. The delivery of oxygen to your muscles also speeds up, so they can do their job efficiently. The increase in your breathing also makes sure there's no buildup of carbon dioxide in your bloodstream. Ventilation, or breathing, is the movement of air through the conducting passages between the atmosphere and the lungs. The air moves through the passages because of pressure gradients that are produced by contraction of the diaphragm and thoracic muscles. Pulmonary ventilation. Pulmonary ventilation is commonly referred to as breathing. It is the process of air flowing into the lungs during inspiration, inhalation, and out of the lungs during expiration, exhalation. Air flows because of pressure differences between the atmosphere and the gases inside the lungs. Air, like other gases, flows from a region with higher pressure to a region with lower pressure. Muscular breathing movements and recoil of elastic tissues create the changes in pressure that result in ventilation. Pulmonary ventilation involves three different pressures. Atmospheric pressure, intraalveolar or intrapulmonary pressure, intrapleural pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure of the air outside the body. Intraalveolar pressure is the pressure inside the alveoli of the lungs. Intrapleural pressure is the pressure within the pleural cavity. These three pressures are responsible for pulmonary ventilation. What muscles do you use to breathe? Your main breathing muscle is the diaphragm. This divides your chest from your abdomen. Your diaphragm contracts when you breathe in, pulling the lungs down, stretching and expanding them. It then relaxes back into a dome position when you breathe out, reducing the amount of air in your lungs. When you exercise, your abdominal muscles are used to push air out of the lungs when you breathe out. This is called forced expiration. There are also muscles in between the ribs, which keep the rib cage stiff and help with breathing. These are called intercoastal muscles. Your main breathing muscle is the diaphragm. This divides your chest from your abdomen. Your diaphragm contracts when you breathe in, pulling the lungs down, stretching and expanding them. It then relaxes back into a dome position when you breathe out, reducing the amount of air in your lungs. When you exercise, your abdominal muscles are used to push air out of the lungs when you breathe out. This is called forced expiration. There are also muscles in between the ribs, which keep the rib cage stiff and help with breathing. These are called intercostal muscles. Breathing in. Healthy lung tissue is springy and elastic so your muscles need to work to expand your chest and draw air into your lungs. Signals from the respiratory center in your brain travel down nerves to your diaphragm and other muscles. The diaphragm is pulled flat, pushing out the lower rib cage and abdomen. At the same time, the muscles between your ribs pull your rib cage up and out. This expands the chest and draws air into the lungs. Air is pulled into your nose or mouth and into your windpipe. This divides into airways supplying the left and right lungs. The air passes down the airways, which divide another 15 to 25 times, 
and finally into thousands of smaller airways until the air reaches the air sacs called alveoli. Inspiration or inhalation is the process of taking air into the lungs. It is the active phase of ventilation because it is the result of muscle contraction. During inspiration, the diaphragm contracts and the thoracic cavity increases in volume. This decreases the intraalveolar pressure so that air flows into the lungs. Inspiration draws air into the lungs. We breathe in through negative pressure. Breathing out. At rest, breathing out is mostly a passive process. The muscles you use to breathe in now relax and your elastic lungs push air out. When you exercise and your body needs to move air more quickly, your abdominal muscles provide the main drive for exhaling. The intercostal muscles also help. The system works so that you breathe in and out comfortably at rest where the least effort is required to move air, and you're probably not conscious of your breathing. When you exercise, you need to move more air. To do this, you can take bigger breaths or breathe more quickly, usually both. Although breathing is usually automatic, you can control it if you want to, when you talk or sing, for example. Expiration or exhalation is the process of letting air out of the lungs during the breathing cycle. During expiration, the relaxation of the diaphragm and elastic recoil of tissue decreases the thoracic volume and increases the intraalveolar pressure. Expiration pushes air out of the lungs. We breathe out through positive pressure. Breathing is a complex process that relies heavily on the coordinated action of the muscles of respiration and the control center in the brain. The primary function of the lungs is to facilitate gas exchange between inspired air and the circulatory system. It helps bring oxygen to the blood and remove carbon dioxide from the body. Oxygen is critical for proper metabolism on a cellular level, while carbon dioxide is crucial for achieving adequate pH levels. Several mechanisms exist to ensure a rigorous balance between supply and demand. In response to a change in blood gases, the pulmonary system adapts by adjusting breathing patterns to help meet the body's metabolic demand. Exercise, for instance, increases oxygen consumption and raises carbon dioxide production. Should, at any point, the available oxygen supply fail to meet the necessary demand, aerobic metabolism ceases and energy production declines. Likewise, if carbon dioxide were to accumulate without proper disposal, the blood becomes more acidic and cellular damage ensues, ultimately leading to organ failure. Neither outcome is desirable. Therefore, numerous mechanisms exist to match respiration with the continually changing demands. Central and peripheral chemoreceptors as well as meconoreceptors in the lungs, convey neural and sensory input to the brain to help modulate respiratory drive. The respiratory center responds in return by changing its firing pattern to alter breathing rhythm and volume. Each respiratory cycle begins with inspiration and ends with expiration. During inspiration, the diaphragm and the external intercostals contract causing enlargement of the thoracic cavity. As a result, intrapleural pressure decreases, and so does alveolar pressure, forcing the lungs to expand and air to move in. Expiration, on the other hand, occurs passively when the diaphragm relaxes, owing to the lung's elastic properties. The respiratory control system drives respiratory cycles and consists of three components the central neural respiratory generator, the sensory input system, and the muscular effector system. The rate and strength at which the diaphragm contracts, hence the frequency and volume of respiration, depends heavily on the firing pattern of pacemaker cells in the brainstem. The sensory input system, on the other hand, sends signals to the brain to modulate respiratory patterns depending on metabolic demand. 
Together, these processes aim to optimize the lung's function of taking in oxygen from the air and expelling carbon dioxide from the body. Check out our other videos for more information about airway anatomy and pulmonary pressure changes. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment or request a video topic below. Thanks for watching.